What is up, YouTube? I have great news. But first, due to an unfortunate series of circumstances that have nothing whatsoever to do with the fact that I suck at my job, I have had no choice but to sacrifice... Sacrifice my teddy bear pardon in order to... Oh, wait, I feel it. I feel it. Sigma. Chaos waste drops on the 20th of April. Ah, oh, thank God. Sorry, not sorry. It had to be done. Anyways, welcome to Dagger News, the only news channel that cuts to the chase. Quite literally, I, of course, am your host, Dippy <coughs> I mean, I of course am your host, Stan Stepperino. And in today's news, so many news, like so much news. But first of all, Chaos Waste drops on the 20th of April in exactly a week. But more than that, there's a bombshell of epic proportions. Of epic proportions. Of epic proportions. Legendary proportions. <laughs> Cast Waste will be a free update. Completely free. No hidden fees, and if I dare say so myself, free update, that is a great price for a DLC. Like, not gonna lie, it's almost the best price, you know what I mean? Um, and I think it's an amazing move on Fat Shark. I was about to say publicity perspective, like, like from a publisher perspective, I think it's a great move. And the reason I think it's a great move, that they're gonna make Chaos Waste just a free-to-play DLC, that anyone who owns the game can freely update, and actually a DLC that reduces the overall uh, file size of the game as well. But we'll get back to that. But I think it's a great move because the player base, like the core player base, is not huge, right? It's there, but it's not, it's not giant, right? But the game is still fairly well known, uh, like widely known. And a lot of people bought the game, played it, and left the game, right? After, you know, they, they played the, the amount that they felt they needed, they've gotten their, their, their money's worth, and they stopped playing the game at a certain point, right? And I think this is a great move, both financially and for sort of the state of, of the game in general, because what this might do, or could potentially do, at least is what I hope, is bring a lot of people back to the game whom likely wouldn't have gone out of their way to purchase a new DLC, right? They might have heard of it and they, now nah, it's, you know, I played it, but I don't feel like I want to spend another, how, how, you know, however much to buy the new DLC just to play the new DLC. But I think a lot of players, knowing that it's a free update that's coming, are going to come back into the game. And when you have a larger player base in the game, when they release the new elf, right? And potentially new cosmetics, that's just a speculation, but I would assume that there are some new cosmetics as well. Um, that's really clever, right? Both from a financial perspective, but also from, from the, sort of the quality of and size of the community. So I think this is a great move on Fat Shark's part. Now, I in fact reached out to one of Vermintide's or Fat Shark's community manager, the one and only, the man, the myth, the legend himself, the one and only Hedge, and asked him for a statement as to, you know, I was just curious, why did you guys choose to actually make this a free update because like I think it's a great decision but I didn't see it coming let me put it that way I did not expect that now uh, I'm gonna quote him here uh, so I just asked him for a statement in reference to you know this whole thing being a free update and he said as follows for us it was super important that we look back at the past and rethink our approach to releasing this expansion it was key for us to release this game mode for every single owner of Rumintide 2 to play with each other without a cost of entry, a cost to entry. We feel every player, new and old, should have an opportunity to jump into wastes together without having an upfront commitment. Smiley. <laughs> so, uh, shout out to Hedge. Uh, much love. And uh, yeah, freaking awesome! And uh, essentially what we're gonna do today is the same thing we always do when there's a new uh, bombshell from Fat Shark. We're gonna look through all of this stuff, uh, see what it's all about, we're also gonna watch the new trailer. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Let's uh, move on. So as you guys can see here, I did in fact not sacrifice a teddy bear to Sigmar to get this information, just in case uh, there were any doubts. <laughs> Chaos Waste's coming April 20th. Free update for Vermintide 2. Now that in of itself, is exciting. Let's uh, let's keep uh, let's let's we're gonna look through all of it. A high stakes adventure. Explore the chaos waste together with your fellow heroes in this new roguelite inspired game mode. B 
build your team from the ground up, decide your tactics together, and prepare for the unexpected. The farther your team progresses, the greater the reward. But beware, failure to reach the expedition's end may rob you of the fruits of your labor. Now, I think the immediate reaction a lot of players will 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 have to this is, oh no, is this like uh, is this going to be another weave situation, right? But I don't think it will. I honestly don't think it will, um, because of the structure of it. And, and we'll, again, there's there's more detail, right? So we'll we'll, we'll get to how this act this new rogue mode actually works. Um, and just the fact that it's not behind a paywall that that obviously also helps. But I actually think this is going to be a lot more a lot more popular than uh, um, than weaves for a couple of different reasons. But let, let's keep looking here. Discover fifteen new locations. I just wanted three maps and I was happy. <laughs> Head out on expeditions and explore fifteen new unique locations. Trust your instincts during your exploration. The path you took yesterday can be inaccessible or obliterated. Your mission is to locate the rumored citadel of eternity in the search for salvation at any cost. Now, what I take notice here is the path uh, is the, the the thing that says the path you took yesterday can be inaccessible or obliterated, which again will make more sense momentarily. Adapt and overcome new challenges. No two expeditions are the same. Thus, the choices you make are more important than ever and can tip the scales from life to death. Choose carefully as you equip new weapons, boons, miracles, and more as you progress through the expedition. We will open that tab as well. Then we look down here, ruinous powers. Now what is this, what is this? Throughout your journey you may encounter areas that are cursed. When you enter a cursed area, the landscape itself is influenced, again, you think of weaves immediately, I get it, uh, by its current ruler, which dramatically changes the way you need to play. So prepare for an extra challenge, as a cursed area can also uh, bring a more sinister threat. Now, what I believe this to be is actually a bunch of the um, the modifiers that are also present, at least some of them, are present in uh, Twitch mode. Um, and are some of my favorite modifiers, like Tahiki and Twins. I would imagine that that's uh, potentially one of them. Jeans. I don't know if that's related to Tahiki and Twinch. Again, I'm uh, <laughs> when it comes to actual vermin, uh, Warhammer lore, I am unfortunately uh, a scrub. Um, so you guys are gonna have to lecture me on uh, <laughs> whether I'm wrong here. But uh, but let's reach out. All the guard. Yeah, this is primarily lore. It doesn't actually say much regarding it to uh, what it actually is. But corn. At least I know that. I know that's the uh, um, the damage curse you can get. Uh, in Twitch mode, but uh, anyways, let's uh, move back to the main page here. How to access. The update is a free update for all owners of Vermintide 2 and will be included in the base game installation. Warhammer Vermintide 2 will be updated on April 20th. The download is a remaster and will decrease the disk space it claims. In other, in other words, if your game is uh, 105 gigabytes now, it's going to be less than that after you update it uh, and have the actual update. Castways will be playable on April 20th, uh, April 20th on PC. The update will arrive to console as soon as possible. Oh, shout out to all my console uh, brothers and sisters out there. <laughs> I feel you, man. I feel you. I, I would think it's within two months. I I'd guess I my, my guesstimate would be that, that it's going to be on consoles in two months. That would be my guesstimate. I based that on absolutely nothing. That's <laughs> other than like, yeah, previous releases. Let's see here. This kind is it just me who's getting like keep vibes from this tower in the background. <sighs> but like uh, what, what I have sort of what I've concluded is that sure, some of the effects are weave like. Let's be real about that. But what I think it is, is it's sort of these 15 stages of progression, right? And, and there's more. There's more. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> let's see here. Uh, Pilgrim's Guide. We're gonna look at. We're gonna look at this next. Um, but what I understand it to be is like a, a changing. You you know, sort of like in Fort Braxtonbrook, where there's like different paths you can take. I think in a larger but similar sense, there's gonna be sort of these these 15 continuous maps, so to speak, with a progression where where 
you know, some some paths will be unavailable at, at certain times. There'll certainly be multiple available at a time. Maybe uh, you know, for certain decisions, there's only one where where you know the game chooses for you but where you essentially have to yeah, choose your path in between here there's also going to be new potions which we'll also get to again momentarily uh lots to talk about but let's look here part one the citadel of eternity um learn more about yeah let's learn more about the citadel of eternity so i don't quite know how to put the uh seam salt spark i'm thinking Bleak times are upon the Warhammer world. I, I would read all of this. I honestly, if you guys want me to, then I'd gladly do that. Um, it's just that the, the lore aspect is usually not my sort of area of expertise. And I also don't want to bore you guys. Uh, those of you that, you know, are just here for the facts, so to speak. So I'm actually curious what you uh, how you guys look at that. that Because I've always considered myself to be uh, very focused on, you know, the science aspect, so to speak, of the game. And not so much the lore, because I felt like I didn't know what I was talking about. <laughs> that is the honest truth. Now, it doesn't say much here. Spy with hunters. The Citadel of Eternal lies in the heart of the Chaos Waste, a region blasted by magic when the Dark Gods intruded upon the world. This proves something of a problem, as entry to the Citadel of Eternity is granted only to those who complete three grueling expeditions in echo of those who have gone before. Only when these initial challenges are overcome will the path to the Citadel itself be revealed. But be warned, if the Uber Strike 5 fail at any point in the expedition, they have to return to Tell's Horn Keep to begin again uh, and begin again. Let's look part two, planning your expedition. Castaways are an ever-changing wilderness. F I, again, my, my first, actually I initially thought that maybe this was actually like a huge thing and that, that it was actually going to be generated like that there would be an element of you know uh, uh, of uh, of ai gen ter terrain generation but i don't think that's the case um full of mystery and danger no two journeys through its bounds are wholly alike at last the uber strike 5 will have to venture up many times before realizing their goal to navigate the ever-changing chaos waste uh, the ulysia has acquired don't ask an enchanted map Penned by notorious madman Marius Hollister. No idea who that is, but I'm sure some of you guys do. Through arcane artifice, this man charts the possible paths through the wilderness. At each stage of the quest, will, will, oh, at each stage of their quest, the Uber Strike Five will vote on the best way to proceed with their expedition. Each journey is unique. While our heroes might visit some of the same locations on different expeditions, the shifting paths within the Chaos Waste means that those locations will appear in a different order each time. Indeed, even the journey through these locations might prove different on new visits. That's what I was yeah, referencing before. Moreover, the Chaos Gods forever scry the Chaos Wastes in search of entertainment. Whether their gaze falls, the mortal world recoils, Adding fresh da dangers to a land already overburned, uh, overburned with them. For all its imprecision, Holzer's map provides all of the information the Uber Strike Five needs to plan their next move. Includes locations to their pilgrimage, enemies encountered. Uh, blah blah blah. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Our shrines. Through expeditions are grueling. They are not without respite. Along the way, the Uber Strike Five at certain, uh, are certain to encounter godly shrines where they can seek blessings of wholesome gods in order to gird themselves for the journey ahead. We'll talk more about these in later part of the Pilgrim's Guide. Okay, Areas of the Worthy. Assuming the Uber Strike Five do not meet with failure, they will at last reach an arena of the Worthy in which they must prove themselves against a tide of foes. Should they triumph, they are one step closer to unlocking the path to the Citadel of the Eternity itself. Walking the Chaos Wastes. Five are not the first to make a pilgrimage. The route is littered with the remains and possessions of those who have tempted the journey before. As they begin the journey, they will encounter many unusual things. Cairn Gates. These are landmarks unchanging even in the ever and Chaos Wastes. Serve as guides to those undertaken for pilgrimage uh, to the Citadel. Reshape, dark, dark, dark gods, blah, blah, blah. Uh, mysterious, blah, 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 strange. Okay, it doesn't really reveal much here. It doesn't say a lot. Pilgrimage coins. A new currency, maybe. 
Caskets are small burglar coins, forged are unfamiliar, unstable metal. And they can be better for godly favor along a path. Okay. A wise traveler hoards them well and spends them wisely. They can be bartered for godly favor along the path. So maybe this is actually not a currency that you use to buy like cosmetics and stuff outside, right? That you use all the time. Maybe this is a currency that you find along the way and actually sort of a currency that you use in a mission itself, maybe. Like in an, uh, to, to yeah, obtain certain powers for that run specifically. Waystone altars. Uh, north makeshift weapons and their own innate skills. They will not want for weapons. The landscape is dotted with altars in which can be found mighty uh, ar armaments and powerful boons employed by those who have trod the path before. Such gifts are not free for the taking, however, to so take up the arms of the, uh, their predecessors, the Ubus Rack 5. Much offer pilgrimage coins, yeah, exactly, to receive the altar's bounty. Okay, the more coins the altar demands, the more powerful the gift. That makes sense. Chests of Trials, uh, b -b 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 before. However, the seeking additional challenge, when we searching for entertainment to enliven a fearful existence. These relics appear at random. Divine wish of board deity opening a chest of trials draws the attention of a monstrous foe uh, and sorcel to act as its guardian defeat the guardian and the chest contains uh, contents can be claimed okay nice so it's like a, a voluntary bus spawn for example right um, that's nice I like that part four shrines types of shrines gods okay let's see here shrines of harmony are favored by deities who prefers bestowing gifts of fortitude and healing rather than destruction. Last but not least, shrines of fortune are associated with flicker gods, uh, fickler gods, sorry, who favor worldly possessions and often a little mischief. If presented with a choice of shrine, the Ubers are finally the opportunity to choose the one that best suits their strengths, weaknesses, and combat strategies. Miracles and boons. Upon reaching a shrine, each member uh, selection of miracles boons to purchase our heroes must sacrifice the coins. Can be purchased only once. Uh, it's a powerful gift that benefits the whole party, either in the form of sacred artifacts or uh, to be used on the next stage of your journey, or blessings of empower all the heroes for a limited time. By contrast, boons are unique to each member of the party. Each provides a boost or special or special ability to the hero who purchases it until the expedition ends. Boost or special ability. That's interesting. That's interesting. Maybe I'm reading too much into it, but when I'm reading a special ability, I'm thinking that it's something like, you know, sort of like a bomb, except a different effect of some sorts, right? Maybe it's like a, like a Slayer ulti that you can, you know, use once, right? That anyone can, you know, like a one-time jump, get out of jail free card, maybe, you know, things like that. Who knows? Godly Gifts, the Jade Sensor, bestowed gift upon Raya, Goddess of Life, ba -ba -ba, will give him a rainbow face, magic invoked, should be forgotten, that, uh, that doesn't tell us much. Ancestor of Engineering, so the story goes, he created the first bomb to slay a mighty bloodthirster during his father's Grimnir's desperate quest to end the threat of chaos. But back, but Shadow of Original Bomb outmatches... Though the secret was lost to his descendants, those who seek his favor may find themselves rewarded with a device that while a mere shadow of the original bomb outmatches mortal contraptions strangely. Morgrim's bomb doesn't seem to employ black powder at all, but some essence unknown even to the most experienced of engineers. Seems, uh, seems to because no one has even ever found a way to pry the shell apart without ushering themselves into a mournful ranks of deceased. Of the deceased. The beneficent gods. There is only Sigmar. All hail Sigmar. This is blasphemy. That S right there. The beneficent god. And he is Sigmar. <laughs> Unsurprisingly, Salt Spire seeks Sigmar's fail. Hmm. Who would have known? <laughs> Mermidia, the goddess of war. Ooh, Sienna, who cares little for gods per se, 
has nonetheless found a certain commonality with the goddess who uh, treasures cleverness, hates bullies, and burns things to a crisp. That makes sense. Valaya, god of healing. Okay, nice. Dwarfish existence. Lilith. L Lilith. Lilith. Um, goddess of much venerate by the elves. Uh, for often seen as capricious themselves. Carillion holds the moon goddess dearer than any other de deity. Tall. I'm tall. No. Uh, the god of the hunt and wilderness. Nice. Cooper caught us in between the imperial presence. No better choice of patron than tall. Ah, nice. And lastly here. Not lastly in the video, but lastly here we have part six. Potions galore. Oh yeah. Now this this is something uh, I'm interested about. Really interested about. Like, damn, this is uh, this is gonna be amazing. Uber Strike Five will find more than weaponry and ancient coins on their pilgrimage. The road is littered with mysterious potions, abandoned by or stolen from those who have made the journey in times past. Each supposedly bears a godly imprint. This perhaps even brew crafted by divine hands. Whatever the truth, these potions offer powerful benefits to the Im Imbiber? Is that a word? Wait. Imbiber? Never heard that word before. To absorb a liquid. To soak it up. Okay. Imbibe. Ah. Okay, so that's what a sponge does. Sponge imbibes. Gotcha. I actually wasn't familiar with that term. That's odd. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> benefits to the imbiber. Perhaps enough to even the odds on a long and difficult journey. Potions of Poison Aegis, the goddess of authority, is not overly renowned for her healing touch. As the elven goddess of pleasure and seduction, she is more selfish than selfless. However, she also guards her impossible beauty, jealousy, and loathes anything that might cause disfigurement, as poisons are wont to do. This drought is one of many specifics against such perils making the imbiber immune to all poisons for a time. God damn. <laughs> yes, a counter to gas rats. Finally. <laughs> Potions of agility. You mean speed pot? No, let's see what happens. Uh, Loric the trickster is the elven patron of dances, plays, and merriment. He is renowned for his speed and dexteriousness and delights in sharing those gifts with mortals capable of wielding them. Once this potion is imbibed, the drinker will find their agility greatly boosted. And that was a difficult word, dexterity. <laughs> potion of life, yes! Yes! Oh, glorious lifesteal. I, I, I don't know why, but there's just, I always, like everyone loves lifesteal, let's be real. Lifesteal, vampirism, whatever you want to call it, is just such a great mechanic where the amount of damage you deal is directly correlated to the amount of health you get. There's just something about that, right? There's just something about that. As someone who's played a lot of MOBAs, right? Like Dota and, uh, and Heroes of New Earth. And like, there's just something about that, right? Because there's, there's a tiny threshold where if you reach that threshold, right? it's, like, it's like my only defense here is an offense, literally. The only way I can stay alive is by dealing enough damage. And there could be like, like a tiny difference between becoming immortalized because I deal just enough damage to keep staying, you know, to, to, to sustain my health. And, and yeah, yeah, I love lifesteal. Kain is the elven god of murder and incredibly dedicated to his passion. Those who call upon his favor are cruel beyond measure. Indeed, he is the foremost deity worshipped by the dark elves of Nagaroth. This potion, brewed from unspeakable ingredients, bestows a dark enchantment on the drinker. Restoring health for every foe they kill. Potion of life share. Oh, oh there's so many. Holy shit. Far to the east, beyond the world's edge. Mountains. Bef Far to the east, beyond the world's edge. Mountains. A brutal race of ogre worships. A brutal race of ogres worship the all-consuming great maw. Drawing strength from gluttony and hunger. 
drinking his greasy potion invokes all the powers of ogre's shamanic butchers, allowing one's companions to feast on the bloodshed caused by one's blows, mending their wounds. Okay, so this is this is team. This is it's a, the more you kill, the more you heal your team. That's interesting. <laughs> potion of stealth. Oh. Trakira is the queen of vengeance, ever ready to lend aid to those who seek bloody revenge. As benefits an elven goddess uh, of Mirai, the elven underworld, she knows few restraints on how retribution is to be attained. This potion is one of her favorite toys. It makes the drinker entirely invisible, long enough to stick something very sharp and possibly poisoned in a tender spot. <laughs> this is going to be interesting. <laughs> Uh, invisible ground line. Woo! <laughs> Potion of endless bombs. <laughs> what? Because that makes sense. Science! <laughs> that is the most chat potion I have ever heard of. Guys, this right here is the potion of endless bombs. <laughs> when I drink this, Now all of my explosives are infinite. <laughs> all my C4, all my grenades, all my nukes, doesn't matter. <laughs> all my explosives, they just, they blow up and they come right back. <laughs> Through Barden will not weakingly speak of them. There are dwarves who, uh, who live beyond the world's edge mountains. Dark and spiteful creatures who consort with daemons and practice their darkest magic. Their patron is Hashhut father of darkness and flame, who favors the imbiber of his drafts with an unlimited supply of bitter explosives for a brief time. How is this achieved? Yeah, that, that was my initial thought as well. No one really knows. If Barton has any explanation, he's keeping it to himself. <laughs> it's like, a wild bomb appeared. Oh, well, that was, that was practical. <laughs> Potion of Wrath. Verena is a goddess of wisdom and justice, and eternal opponent of tyranny. She is said to value reason above force. Me too. <laughs> but is content to provide force if merited. Take this potion, for example. A stiff drink fills the environment with a thirst for justice, empowering their blows until the effect fades away. So a strength pot, a pot of sorts. And lastly, we have potion of prophetic strike. Prophetic strike, yeah. Mor is a god of the dead and of dreamers. He sees much that is hidden from mortals, though is occasionally prepared to share his knowledge in the form of a vision. This potion is prepared using dew collected from the headstone of saints and mistakes and grants the drinker a split second of foresight, enough to land a single dollar's blow. What? What? Grants the drinker a split second foresight. What? Is it like, but is it like, okay, so I, I'm seeing two options here that, that, that I can, like, that I can think of that could work. Because it is a multiplayer game, right? So it can't really be that you can turn back time a second or something. That, that wouldn't really make sense. I'm thinking it's either, it's either showing you what is going to spawn next. That's one option, right? So like it might foresee, oh, uh, an assassin is about to spawn or a boss is about to spawn or a horde is about to spawn. That's one option, I, I, but that's not what it sounds like, right? Grants the drink a split second of foresight enough to, la to land a single Dolores blow. So like, I, I don't know, how would that work? To actually do an attack by get, having force, I'm not, I felt like I had an idea, but that, that didn't make sense either. I'm not sure, it's gonna be interesting. That much is for sure. <laughs> and I think that's pretty much, you know, other than the trailer, which we'll watch here in the end, frequently asked questions coming soon. Um, 
But yeah, 50 new locations and it's all free. Hat off to Fat Shark for uh, making this update free. Let's uh, end off the video by watching the new re newly released trailer. All my life, I have heard whispers of a place where righteous gods heed mortal prayers. The Citadel of Eternity. It will take several pilgrimages to uncover the Citadel's location. The Chaos Wastes are a wilderness of tangled paths, blighted by the Dark Gods. Onwards to salvation. Sounds good to me. This time. Not to see new places. Oh yes. What could possibly go wrong? Okay, wait, wait. Let's take one more look at it, but where we freeze frame all of the gameplay moments to see if we can, uh, if there are any reveals, anything juicy we can... Uh... Oh, new weapon reveal! Here we go, I didn't even notice that before, new weapon reveal! Guardian! Boom! Oh yeah! And lastly, for the true mad lads that are still here, I almost left this part out accidentally. We have uh, some weapon reveals. The Troll Hammer Torpedo for Bardeen, useful for controlling crowds and busting open armor. A new Spear and Shield for Kruber, perhaps not the greatest at dealing with a horde, leave that to the Troll Hammer, but strong in a 1v1 with its high damage, fast attacks, and the ability to strike whilst bl and the ability to strike whilst blocking. Moving on to Kirillion, a Moonfire Bow. Its basic attack sends out an arrow capable of starting fires at the cost of energy. On right click it has great range with a zoom and offers a charged attack, also at the cost of energy. When the energy levels in the bow deplete, it can be used no further, but recharges automatically when not being used. In other words, it's essentially like a safe Sienna staff. Right? Like, uh, that's how I'm, I'm reading it. That it has a bar of energy, and it's just that, in this case, you don't blow yourself up if you, uh, if you overuse it. The Gryffindor Pistol for Saltspire. We've known about this for quite some, some time. We teased this one late last year. It's a lot like a sawn-off shotgun, with similar, uh, while similar to the Bracer Pistols, but trading long range for a projectile volley, handy for groups of unarmored enemies. Things like monks, for example, is what that's going to be really good for. And finally, the Coruscation Staff for Sienna. This staff can shoot a volley of fiery rocks or summon flame geysers that erupt from the ground or any surface it casts. Geyser size depends on the length of the cast. Handy for controlling crowds. So something similar to the Conflag in some sense, right? Anyways, oh, it's gonna be great. Anyways, this wasn't at all what I was gonna make a video about today, but uh, when, once they dropped this, I kind of dropped everything I was doing and uh, went straight for it. <laughs> Chaos Waste is coming out in a week. One week exactly, Tuesday next week. So uh, looking forward to that. It's gonna be amazing. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, 
please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, or join if you uh, if you want to join uh, our new uh, YouTube membership club, the Swagger Dagger Squad. And uh, let me know down in the comments what you guys think about Fat Shark dropping this huge bombshell of yeah, yeah, the whole DLC being free to play. And as always, I love you guys. Stay awesome. Peace out.